I do remember sort of thinking, yeah, well done, you married an addict. I do remember that, you marry your father. I remember that going through my head, even though I thought I, I really, really didn't. You know, so I remember going, how did this happen? You know, I married an artist. You know, my dad was a tradesman, you know. Um, I, he, was the, he was almost the polar opposite to my dad, I thought. Um, but I think there wasn't much of history repeating itself because I was in a different role. I was a mother and a wife, not a child. So I think I learned some things growing up a little bit. I knew I didn't want my kids to grow up in the house with an addict. It was really small things at first that became habit. Um, things like um, not coming home. He'd, he'd stay late at work and I'd stop setting the table for him because I knew he wouldn't be home because he was working really hard and then that came under the umbrella of helping his dad and being a good son so I just laid off, you know, I didn't, it was nothing. So it started with not coming home and then that sort of progressed to not getting up. That was annoying, that really upset me because I'd get phone calls from work and so I ended up being sort of getting everyone's grief because like, I'd answer the phone, where's Mike, he's not here, I can't get him up, get him got to the point where his brother would stop by every morning to get him out of bed because I gave up trying to wake him up. You get used to living a certain way with a certain atmosphere and, and the stress and the arguments that you know are going to come and you both get in your roles and you go for it but that for me was a this is too far away from the man I married and the man I love this isn't right. I had periods of thinking I knew and then not wanting to believe it because it's quite a hard thing to accept and I, and I firmly believe that I wasn't ready because I, I think I knew that I, I was going to have to leave. And so I, I sort of, I waited I guess, looking back. I thought I'm not strong enough for this, the kids aren't big enough, I can't do this. So I waited and when I did get evidence, um, I said I can't do this with you, you have, to, you have to do it on your own. He got into higher ground really quickly, which was a massive blessing. I think he, I think he realised, I think he realised he was going to have to fight because I was cutting cords real quick. So um, he got into higher ground and did the four months in there. I took the kids in on the Sunday and everything. But we were, we were separate, you know. I was saying, oh, I've been on a date and things like that. But whenever I saw him, I just had this massive, that's home. And especially as I saw him getting better, that was really, that was confronting, because I was like, well, he's getting better. What, is, what does that mean for me now, that he's sorting his stuff out? And is there too much water under the bridge? Can I, yeah, so that was, that was, they were big decisions. If you let one stone fall, the rest of them might just come. And that's what my friends are, you're stoic, you're stoic mess. Because I knew if I let one thing go, God, it would be a landslide. So I sort of had to, and I had this sort of analogy, I used to say, I've boxed it in my mind. I put a box, it's got this colour ribbon on it, and when I'm ready to unwrap it, I will, but I'm not. So I'm not going to process that. So I've learned self-care is huge. Yeah, especially if you've got a family, you can't, you can't just fall apart. You can't just not get out of bed. You can't have a screaming hangover. You've got to get up, you've got to deal with the kids, and you've got to make sure they're all right, and all that sort of thing. So, no, I made so many mistakes, um, emotional mistakes I made. Through all this, we're, we're, we're stronger than ever. We're almost, well, it sounds terrible, but grateful for it. You know, you talk to cancer survivors. I related a lot to people who have survived a, a terminal illness because it was. Our relationship was dying, and he was dying, I was dying. And um, we nearly lost, we did, we lost everything. If I, if I was the person I was now, knowing what I know now, it would be completely, I would have supported him. I would. If, if Michael relapsed, which is an absolute possibility, um, I, would, I would like to think you know, that I would be there and go, OK, it's part of the cycle and I'll stay with, I'll stand by you. It's almost like we've not taken the emotion out, but we can sit back and talk about it not easily. It's still sometimes difficult, but I think, like I said, we, we know what's got us this far, so...